This summer will mark the first time that a USGA National Championship will be held on a Seth Rayner golf course as Country Club of Charleston will play host to the 2019 US Women's Open Championship. We made the trip up to South Carolina to learn a bit more about the golf course and its history, and thanks to the Southern hospitality that you might expect, we had some excellent tour guides along the way. Country Club of Charleston, uh, the golf course was built in 1925 by Seth Rayner. It was redone in 2006 by Brian Silva, which was a big redo. Prior to that, we had we had uh, Hurricane Hugo in, in uh, 1989, which destroyed the golf course. John LaFoy put it back after that, and then since then we had to redo uh, the classic golf course. So I dug around, called a couple of my contacts who were um, environmental engineers, and they said, hey, here's there's this great 1938 uh, aerial of Charleston County. Pulled it up and the entire country club was, was in a three by three inch square and took that to a local photography group who were, they were able to blow it up and get a lot of definition out of it and presented that to Brian Silva. Brian ended up adding 20 to 30 bunkers based on that photo. For someone who has never played a Seth Rainer course or doesn't understand his style of architecture, how would you describe it? He generally gives you a way to play golf by rolling the ball up to the hole. You don't have to be in the air. And I think that's what old old time architects did. They had the, 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 the ground game. And you don't see that much anymore. So playing this old style golf course like this, anybody can play it. For golf course junkies, it's hard to have a conversation about course design that doesn't include at least a reference to Seth Rayner. Rayner was heavily influenced by his years under the tutelage of C.B. McDonald, who is often considered the father of American golf course architecture. Some of Rainer's most well-known golf courses include Fisher's Island, Shore Acres, TPC Old White at the Greenbrier, Yale, and many others across the United States. Seth Rainer golf courses often feature several template holes. These are holes that are modeled after some of the most famous and strategic golf holes of the British Isles and are adapted with different variations across the courses that Rainer and McDonald designed. Many of these can be found at Country Club of Charleston, like the Reverse Redan 11th, which is templated off the 15th hole at North Berwick, the Road 12th, templated off the 17th hole at St. Andrews, the double plateau 14th, where two different sections of the green are raised above the third, and the 17th, known as the short. Rainer golf courses are often characterized more as strategic courses than penal, as he considered it key for all skill levels to be able to enjoy his golf courses. Lengthwise, in today's technology, it does favor the ladies' game more than the men. The golf course requires you to have accuracy. The greens are fairly flat. But if you miss the greens, you got to have some ingenuity on how to play the next shot. Uh, it's either putt it or chip it or, or pitch it. And the greens will be fast for this championship. What are they at today? Oh, probably about 11 or so. Are you going to dial them up for in a few months here? Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Number 11, our famous hole, is, is, a, is a make or break hole. Uh, the, la the left side is, is, is banked up, so it, it requires a left to right shot off the tee, and then the ball will feed down towards the middle of the green. 175 yard par three. It's kind of funny, there's, there's uh, the last time Frank Ford won the, the Azalea here, he laid up all four days. He hit a pitching wedge all four days and laid up. I think he made three threes and a four. John Harris, when he was playing the Azalea here, made a 12. Ben Hogan was famous for saying, y'all have got 17 great holes, and you can blow up number 11, <laughs> which is pretty funny. Of, of Rainer's stuff that I really appreciate the most, the obvious answer is number 11. I, as I joke all the time, I think by the time that this event's over with, it's going to be a household name, par three. It's okay. just such a brutal hole. Yeah, so Kyle came in, and um, we were looking to put some bunkers back in, in play and to kind of tighten up some drive areas. What can you tell us about what you've done out here? A lot of really cool stuff. You know, first and foremost, just an amazing old Raider golf course. Um, and I think one of his most unique designs, you know, just being down here on the salt marsh and whatnot. And the club has really fallen into some really nice historical uh, data on the on the original course the last couple of years. Uh, you know, original bunker locations, some aerials, some plans, whatnot. So we've just been kind of picking away on a, on a targeted basis on a bunch of the a bunch of bunch of really cool features that are really going to play well for the event and just for day to day member play. So Re-adding some bunkers on the left hand side of uh, number twelve, the, uh, the the road hole version is a u unique rendition here because it's you know it's a drive and pitch hole you know so we re-added what's called the scholars and progressing bunkers at St Andrews. We 
combined two bunkers right here on the right hand side over by the green we made that big bunker on the right hand side of the green larger we put two mounds into it in the middle of the bunker and the left hand fairway bunker we brought into the fairway about 10 yards do you have a favorite hole out here uh, I'd probably say 16. The hole that I really love maybe the most is 16. You know, what has the lion's mouth feature in front of the green. Uh, back in 2006, that was the last hole we, I think we completed to build because the whole back side of the green is built up to like a racing track where the ball rolls in there and gathers on both sides towards the middle. Looking at it from the fairway to that shot, you don't see stuff like that anymore. It's a really cool hole where the players are asked, depending on the hole location, to play way wide right for a good angle into certain hole locations or way wide left. So the players really have to think and analyze all the way back to the tee. And my favorite hole location for our Sunday pin in the Azalea is a center, a center flag. And matter of fact, when I go set that hole up for the, for the championship, I roll the ball to the back of the green. And where it stops is where I put the hole location. So, pretty cool. So how do you go about setting up pins today? Right. Well, we use a computer system called Easy Locator. Okay. And the computer randomly picks spots on the green that uh, that are okay to place okay. a pin. That's uh, our 14th green there. That's the and double this, plateau. Yep. And yeah. this is our 14th green here. And you can see the possible pin locations are in black. They're all one yard apart. And the colors are slopes, uh, how steep they are. Wow. So you can see right now, at the green speed we are currently, we're only allowing it to pick the dark green and the light green. Uh, if they were slower, we could pick some of the orange colors. It's pretty hard to beat the short hole, the 17th. Okay. Uh, you know, the bunkers had kind of been shrunken down over the decades um, to where they were only maybe, you know, a percentage of, of what they were for, maybe 40% of what we have now. Whereas now, from the tee, it just looks like it's completely surrounded by sand. It's really imposing and really intimidating, and it just makes for such a great effect of the penultimate, penultimate hole. You know, the players are going to be standing up there with the national championship on the line and uh, staring at a green with nothing but sand around it. It's going to yeah. be pretty cool. Kyle's work, believe it or not, when he left here after doing this work, it looked like they'd been there forever. And that's that's what that's a testament to him. You know, having worked with the club for the last three years, I couldn't be more excited for them, you know, and for the city of Charleston uh, to have this coming down here. And I hadn't realized until John uh, mentioned it, uh, you know, just during his speech that, you know, uh, like he was surprised that this is gonna be the first time a national championship's held on a, on a Raider course. It's a pretty cool, pretty cool yeah, thing. It's a pretty cool. cool thing to be a part of, that's yeah. for sure.